welcome welcome earthlings to the newest installment of little modular today we will be making friends with this beautiful vintage looking module by soma laboratory straight out of russia this is essentially the effect section taken out from lira 8 and lira 4 synthesizers by the same company soma lab vlad kramer who is the mastermind behind the whole affair decided to um, put it out on the market by itself and that was a brilliant idea because he added some extra features to it and we have a pretty unique delay it's not your typical vanilla delay it's more of characterful and uh, colorful unit which excels in those drony swampy and dirty uh, areas of sound design which i personally love so without further ado let's just dive straight into it it has two delay lines but it's a mono unit so we have one input right here and one output which might seem like a con at the beginning but on the other hand i do understand the concept and uh, the addition of uh, distortion uh, circuit right here and things like self-modulation totally make up for it and it doesn't bother me to be honest at all so going from the top right here we have input gain in the central part of the interface we have delay times for the first and the second delay line which have a pretty wide range as you have heard it goes from those really super short delays not as short like in the multi-dimension right here which i have reviewed a few days ago but still very short metallic sounds up to very long kind of moog delay territory long and swampy directly below those two knobs you have cv attenuators for each of those lines and that's where you input the uh, modulation now there are two switches right here as you can see and they allow you to switch between a traditional cv modulation in the uh, down position so if you want to use external signal which you input right here you would need to switch this down just like it is right here but there is another really nice concept which is called self-modulation if you switch those switches up the module will self-modulate meaning that the feedback signal will be modulating the sample rate of the uh, internal clock so to speak which means in real life it will just give you another color which is more growly aggressive and kind of uh, unpredictable right here you have the uh, mix knob i don't think i need to explain that dry wet below here we have uh, the uh, feedback parameter also pretty much self-explanatory and directly below it you have uh, the uh, attenuator knob for that parameter which can be modulated by this input right here by the way everything is really nicely laid out here graphically so we can see what goes where with all those arrows it's very logical we also have a modulation for the uh, drive parameter right here that's where the distortion section is here you have the knob for mixing in now oh, as you can hear it still talks to me so you can mix in the drive the distortion right here but you can also modulate the uh, distortion uh, aggressiveness right here with this knob and you can also modulate it with uh, this input right here and you can attenuate this modulation here uh, besides that you have input output and in the middle a very useful output delay only out which you can use anywhere else in your system and that's it that's the whole idea it's very simple to operate so let's take a look at each of these section uh, using a real life sound examples uh, i will be using the same percussive sounds that i have used for the multi-dimension these are mainly the uh, hex inverter drums bass drum uh, rim shot and snare drum which are all fueled by shakmat modular 
for Briggs Rook. So for now, let's use only the snare sound so you can exactly hear what this module does to the sound. Okay, let's zero in all the modulation sources, uh, zero feedback, zero distortion, and minimal delay times. Here is the input, okay? And let's dial in some of the shortest delays in. You can hear it's kind of like a flanger sound in this lowest area. If I open up the feedback a bit, you can hear it better. This metallic sound. Yeah, that's very nice. Now it becomes a slap back around 9 o'clock. It's pretty long already at the 12 o'clock. If we go any further, it starts to be really swampy and lo-fi. Melosis, kind of. Okay, and if we increase the feedback even further, right here, it just becomes a drone generator. distorts in a very pleasant way. You can create those drony sounds with no problem. Oh yeah. Yep, thank you very much. That sounds very, very nice. Okay, so now let's hear how the distortion sounds like. Okay. Here, we are mixing in the distortion. And that's where the aggressiveness, the depth of this distortion is dialed in. It's also very pleasant, although aggressive. So if we combine those two, we can already get some really wild sounds without even using any modulation and let me remind you that this is only a simple snare sound so yep that's pretty awesome okay but where the real fun begins is with the modulation now I have connected some simple LFOs here so we can exactly hear what is happening and uh, I have connected the output from Eloquencer sequencer to the feedback right here so if we crank it up you can hear that the feedback is pulsating along with the sequence okay this one right here is a drive modulation. This one is connected to a simple square LFO wave out of Batumi. Let's hear how it sounds like. You can hear it switching periodically in a square manner. So it's alive by itself, but when you modulate it, it becomes really, hate this word, but yes, organic. It's just alive and really dynamic. 
let's get rid of those modulations and let's hear how the modulation of time parameters sounds like. We have only one input for both of the time sections, but it's still very interesting. Let's use it first with the external CV. It's the same Eloquencer sequence. And you can hear it changing. Times. Let's hear it maybe with the LFO. So it's more drastic. Let's maybe switch uh, to a different wave, like a triangle, and see what happens. Okay, so it's more apparent. And let's do the same thing for the second line. So different time settings and different amounts of the modulations will give you, of course, different results. Now, what we can do is we can try the self-modulation. So if we switch to the upper position, so this is without the modulation. That's how it sounds when I crank it up. with self-modulation and the cool thing is that each of the settings of the self-modulation here the amount of the self-modulation will give you really different results oh I like this one it almost sings really nice. Now I found it that it really gives some great results while one of the uh, sections is self-modulated and the other one uses the external modulation. Let's hear it. Okay. <laughs> now let's add distortion. And we're not even using modulation for distortion and feedback. So let's do it. <laughs> yep, it does sound special. Let's modulate the distortion. So as you can hear, it's a never-ending story. It's just an instant groove machine, groove generator. A simplest loop, a simplest pattern will suffice. And you can just create a never-ending dynamic grooves with it. Let's see how it will sound on a typical, simple vanilla synth line. I have a Boomster which is driven by Seek Sequencer and uh, that is how it will sound. That's the shortest time. I really love the slapback on synth lines. It just gives it this extra dimension and it sounds like a spring reverb to me. Can you hear it? Especially if you add some feedback to it. And I'm totally digging this distortion. When it gets to the point of infinite repeats it's just really thick okay and 
these are the longest times. It's like a swarm of bugs that covers the main sound and it changes its character totally. Okay. Now let's maybe use some distortion. That's max distortion. Let's modulate the distortion. And let's modulate the uh, delays. So we have this descending and ascending micro melodies in there. This is really insane. I'm increasing the feedback. And let's check out how the self-modulation works. On one and two. Now we can switch it, so one is self-modulated and the other one is externally modulated. And let's turn up the external feedback modulation. So, as you can hear, it sounds absolutely lovely. If you're looking for this kind of Lo-fi delay, although it's not really lo-fi, I mean, it could be really lo-fi as you can hear, but it has a very wide range, so in those moderate settings, it just sounds like a spring reverb. Not clean, but still very pleasant. And it doesn't sound bad even in the most aggressive settings. That's what is very appealing to me. Even if you crank up this distortion, it just sounds lovely. Just more aggressive. So if you're looking for this kind of color box, because it's not only delay, it's a color box in my mind, then I will definitely check this one out. Super simple to use. Nice vintage look. And... It's built like a tank. So yeah, you should definitely check it out and give it a spin. Thank you very much for your time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like it, and pass on the good word. Love you all. Take care. Till the next time.